what 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 can you say what can you say that's gonna make a difference to a woman watching this who's who lives in a culture that is so repressive um, i'll go for you olivia first because um, I've got a few contacts in South Africa and the economy has been an L since the 2008 crash. So, you know, I didn't know that two thirds of the children don't have schools to go to. Um, yeah. So what can a woman in that kind of environment do? Because of the way men are. For example, we have different cultures as well in our country. Mm -hmm. So they also have the different beliefs about certain things. Um, and rape is actually a huge problem in our country. Um, there's kids, it happens to kids, it happens to teens, it happens to older people, it happens to people in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s. You know, so it's it's because of certain beliefs culturally also is also the reason, one of the reasons why they actually do what they do. Because they think it's going to cure HIV, for example, oh. some oh. silly belief like that. Um, for example, if you sleep with a child, you're going to be more fertile and make more children. Silly things like that. Mm. They... Um, in a culture, for example, that men sort of spread around to younger boys mm -hmm. in their culture growing up, and they actually grow up believing that it's true. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. For example, I've got a son, um, he just popped his head up there, um, and I try to, as a mother and as a female, raise my son differently with different kinds of beliefs and to respect women and women are an objects and there's certain things that you don't do and you don't say and there's a way of speaking to a woman for example and as a dad for example his dad has to also model because he models from his father so that's something I believe for example for my son so also how his father treats his mom is how he sees how to treat women, for example. And the way his father speaks to his mother is also an example of how he will speak to somebody or a girl or growing up maybe as a teen or a man. And that is how he will treat his girlfriend or his wife or his partner, for example. And also friends that are female, colleagues that are female, um, school friends that are female, for example. So it's very important as to what they see and what type of influences they have as well, because it has a major role in their lives. Massively. So for us in our country, we need to tell girls and women, and they need to have, for example, role models and mentors as females, or try to find someone, for example, that is in a different space or maybe in a different culture and try to learn something different than what you know, and also try to read more on certain topics, for example, to just get an open mind and a broader perspective on certain things. But most importantly, an older person, for example, that can be a mentor to little girls and growing up, because I always speak to, for example, girls that are in my family, that are teens, my colleagues, female colleagues, those type of people that look, it's not your fault if something like that happens to you. Like now the other day, there was something that happened in the workspace, for example, and one of my colleagues was telling me a male tried to touch a boob and she was like, did I imagine it? Did I not imagine it? And now she feels like she can't be alone with this person. And she like sort of just said, I don't think we should be alone. What was the response? What was the response? So we like for example it's something that people think is where they will be judged for it and they feel ashamed of it so it felt like you know 
she was going she 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 couldn't say anything or she felt like mm -hmm. she was going to be ostracized or targeted for example if she had to speak up about it but you have to like for example create that space where you support that person mm -hmm. and actually tell them look you did nothing wrong and there was nothing that you did either to actually warrant the behavior or to cause that person to do something like that or no. for them no. to no. actually try to do anything for example because you're in a professional city and we know who you are and what type of person you are and you're not that type of person so yeah you sort of people go automatically questioning themselves like what did i do wrong did i maybe say something did i maybe do something did i maybe dress in a certain way um and like that is what a lot of people even in the work setting if you just, for example, have a skirt on that shows some legs, yeah. then it, yeah. it warrants a comment, for example, or something like um, you're wearing maybe something and the supervisor tells you, aren't you getting cold? Why would you say something like that? Mm. You know? So you, you're trying to tell me I'm dressing too provocatively, but it's not provocative, it's just it's summer year now and it's getting hot. So women are wearing like, you know, their little dresses, even though it's over the knee, it's just a little bit of leg that you're showing with your sandals or things like that. And you still have your jacket or your jersey over it because you at work and you're professional. So there's a certain way of dressing. Hmm. But I mean, you cannot solicit something out of just dressing like that, you know, a little bit of you, um, a little bit more airy where your legs are concerned. Or... Well, this you see is is classic victim shaming, and yeah. um, so uh, in the UK uh, recently there was the rape of a woman called Sarah Everard. She was raped by a serving police officer, and there's a still picture of her where this copper is out holding his warrant badge he puts handcuffs on her puts her in a car she's driven away raped and murdered and it's been an outrage and you know this outrage will last for a few days and then the next outrage will come along and people seem to forget the big picture which is that it's happening so much and so often and what i'm finding alarming in this conversation is that we started thinking, well, started learning how bad it was online. But this is so much more. It's the daily experience. It's the lived experience. Let me ask you this then. You talked about raising your son. And until he gets to secondary school, when he's got male peers then all the good lessons you teach him will be a great bedrock. But there is this toxicity and pornography, which is in the palm of everyone's hand. And so women, girls and boys think that something that is designed for masturbation is real. That, you know, a girl should send a picture of herself naked to a boy in her class and the thing is that clearly these boys are going to get them to show and brag 